Morning class. So today we're going over chapter 30, abdominal and genital urinary injuries. So trauma applies fundamental knowledge to provide basic emergency care and transportation based on assessment findings for an acutely injured patient. Abdominal and genital urinary trauma, recognition and management of blunt versus penetrating mechanisms, evisceration, mm. impaled object. Pathophysiology, uh, assessment management, of solid and hollow organ injuries, blunt versus penetrating mechanisms, evisceration, injuries to the external genitalia, vaginal bleeding due to trauma, sexual assault. The abdomen is the major body cavity extending from diaphragm to pelvis, contains organs that make up digestive urinary and genital urinary systems. Important for EMT to know anatomy and function of abdominal and pelvic cavities. Significant trauma to the abdomen can occur from blunt trauma, penetrating trauma, or both. Injuries to the abdomen that go unrecognized or not repaired in surgery are a leading cause of traumatic death. 10% of all trauma patients have some form of genital urinary tract injury. Anatomy and physiology of the abdomen, abdominal quadrants. Abdomen is divided into four general quadrants. So which is what's the landmark you guys are going to be looking for to divide the four quadrants it's going to be your belly button it's going to be the the division quadrant of bruising pain can delineate which organs are involved ruq right upper quadrant liver gallbladder duodenum pancreas luq stomach and spleen llq descending colon left transverse colon rlq uh, large and small intestine and appendix so RLQ is a common location for swelling and inflammation. The appendix is a source of infection if it ruptures. So have a high index of suspicion. Anybody complaining of lower right quadrant pain. And also looking for probably a fever as well. Probably got some type of infection. So remember the belly button is going to be your division for your uh, four quadrants. Hollow organs. Stomach, intestines, ureters, and bladder. Most contain digested food, urine, or bile. When ruptured or lacerated, contents spill into peritoneal cavity can cause intense inflammatory reaction and infection, such as peritonitis. Intestinal blood supply comes from mesentery, connects the small intestine to the abdominal wall. Patients with injuries to the mesentery can bleed into the peritoneal cavity. So another dia diagram of uh, different organs and where they're going to be in the, the four quadrants. So solid organs, liver, spleen, pancreas, kidneys perform chemical work of the body, enzyme production, blood cleansing, energy production. Because of rich blood supply, hemorrhage can be severe. Injuries to the abdomen. Injuries to the abdomen are considered either open or closed can involve hollow or and or solid organs. Closed abdominal injuries, blunt trauma to abdomen without breaking the skin, MOIs, steering wheel, bicycle handlebars, motorcycle collisions, mm -hmm. falls. Mm -hmm. Compression, poorly laced uh, lap belt or seat belt, being run over by a vehicle, deceleration, fast moving vehicle, strikes an immovable object. Signs and symptoms, pain can be deceiving, often diffuse in nature, uh, maybe referred to another body location. So this is going to be uh, referred pain. Uh, blood in peritoneal cavity produces acute pain in the entire abdomen. Difficult to determine location of pain, guarding, stiffening of abdominal muscles. Abdominal distension is often the result of free fluid, blood or organ contact spilling into peritoneal cavity, abdominal bruising and discoloration may appear as abrasions initially. Seatbelts prevent many injuries and save lives, may cause blunt injuries of abdominal organs, particularly when belt lies too high, and cause bladder injuries to pregnant patients. So you're always looking for seatbelt marks on every patient if you can. Okay, so different, I'm sure you guys all know how to put on a seatbelt. What's the correct way? I think this is more of a, a lap belt. So if you have it too high up, not where it's supposed to be, it's gonna kind of compress some of the organs. 
in a car accident. So open abdominal injuries. Foreign object enters abdomen and opens peritoneal cavity to the outside, also called penetrating injuries. Stab wounds, gunshot wounds, open wounds can be deceiving. Maintain a high index of suspicion. Damage depends on velocity of object, low velocity injuries, knives or other edge weapons. Medium velocity injuries, smaller caliber handguns and shotguns. High velocity injuries, high powered rifles and handguns. High and medium velocity injuries have temporary wound channels caused by cavitation. Cavity forms as a pressure wave from projectile it transfers to tissues, can produce large amounts of bleeding. Low velocity injuries also have capacity to damage organs. Internal injury may not be apparent. If injury is at or below xiphoid process, assume it has affected the thoracic and peritoneal cavities. Visceration, bowel protrudes from peritoneum, can be painful and visually shocking. Do not push down on abdomen, only perform visual assessment. Cut clothing close to wound. Never pull on clothing stuck to or in the wound channel. So remember how we, um, how we treat this, right? Uh, moist, sterile dressing on, just on top of it. We're not gonna try and push the organs back into the body. We're just gonna leave it out there. Uh, cover it up so it doesn't get infected. So signs and symptoms, pain, tachycardia, heart increases pumping action to compensate for blood loss. Later signs include evidence of shock, changes in mental status, distended abdomen. <laughs> Hollow organ injuries often have delayed signs and symptoms, spill contents into abdomen. Infection develops, which can take hours or days. Stomach and intestines can leak highly toxic and acidic li liquids into peritoneal cavity. Both blunt and penetrating trauma can cause hollow organ injuries. Blunt trauma causes organ to pop, releasing fluids and air. Penetrating trauma causes direct injury. Gallbladder and urinary bladder contents are damaging. Air and peritoneal cavity causes pain. Can cause ischemia and infarction. Solid organ injuries can bleed significantly and cause rapid blood loss. Can be hard to identify from physical exam, slowly ooze blood into peritoneal cavity. Liver is the largest organ in abdomen, vascular and can lead to hypoperfusion, often injured by fractured lower right rib or penetrating trauma. Referred pain to the right shoulder is a common finding with an injured liver. Spleen and pancreas, vascular and prone to heavy bleeding. Spleen is often injured, motor vehicle collisions, steering wheel trauma, falls from heights. Bicycle and motorcycle accidents involving handlebars. Diaphragm, when penetrated or rupture, loops of bowels invade thoracic cavity, patient may exhibit dyspnea. Kidneys, can cause significant blood loss. Common finding is blood in urine, hematuria, blood visible in urinary metis and indicates significant trauma to genitur genitourinary system. Patient assessment of abdominal injuries. Assessment of abdominal injuries is difficult. Causes of injury may be apparent, but resulting tissue damage may not be. Patient may be overwhelmed with more painful injuries. Some injuries develop and worsen over time, making reassessment critical. So you're seeing size up, seeing size up, uh, standard precautions of gloves and eye protection should be a minimum. Be sure seeing is safe for you. Call for additional resources early if needed. Mechanism of injury, nature of illness, observe this scene for early indicators of MOI. Consider early spinal precautions if the wound is penetrating and inspect object of penetration. Mm. Primary assessment, perform a rapid mm. Rapid scan helps establish seriousness of condition. Some injuries will be obvious and graphic. Others will be subtle and go unnoticed. Injury may have occurred hours or days earlier. Form a general impression. Important indicators will alert you to seriousness of condition. Don't be distracted from looking for more serious hidden injuries. Check for responsiveness using ABPU scale or ABPU. Address life-threatening external hemorrhage before airway and breathing concerns. Airway and breathing. Ensure airway is clear and patent. If spinal injury is suspected, prevent patient from moving. Clear airway of vomitus. A distended abdomen may prevent 
adequate inhalation. Providing oxygen will help improve oxygenation. Circulation, superficial abdominal injuries usually do not produce significant external bleeding. Internal bleeding can be profound. Trauma to liver, kidneys, and spleen can cause significant internal bleeding. Evaluate pulse, skin color, temperature, and condition to determine stage of shock. Treat aggressively. Transport decision. Abdominal injuries generally indicate a quick transport to the hospital. Delay in medical evaluation may result in unnecessary and dangerous progression of shock. Patients with abdominal injuries should be evaluated at the highest level of trauma center available. History taking. Investigate chief complaint MOI. Identify signs, symptoms, and pertinent negatives, and also pertinent positives. Movement of body or abdominal organs irritates peritoneum, causing pain. To minimize this pain, patients will lie still with knees drawn up. So this is going to be a guarding position because they're guarding their abdomen. So if you see somebody in that, it usually means they got some type of abdominal injury. Sample history. Remember, get, trying to get a sample history on every patient. doesn't matter if it's medical or trauma. Patients unconscious, try and get a sample history from bystanders, uh, friends, family members, whoever's on scene if you can. Use OPQRST to help explain injury. Ask if there's nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Ask about appearance of any bowel movements and urinary output. Secondary assessment may not have time to perform in the field. Physical examinations inspect for bleeding to remove or loose and close to expose injuries. Provide privacy. Patients should remain in position of comfort. Examine entire abdomen. Critical steps for patients with entrance wound. Use TCAP BTLS on every patient, especially for traumas. Uh, inspect and palpate for deformities. Look for presence of contusions, abrasions, puncture wounds, penetrating injuries, and burns. Palpate for tenderness and attempt to localize to specific quadrant of abdomen. Swelling may indicate significant intra-abdominal injury. Palpate the quadrant furthest away from quadrant exhibiting signs of injury and pain. So remember, if you have a injury in the right lower quadrant, where are you going to start palpating at? You're going to start palpating up at the left upper quadrant. Allows you to investigate the possibility of radiation of pain. Perform full body scan to identify injuries. If you find life threat, stop and treat it. So if you have any major bleeding, patient has arterial bleeding, you want to make sure to grab a tourniquet. Make sure to stop that bleeding before you start your assessment, before you go on. Uh, assess need for spinal mobilization. So always consider C-spine for every patient. Inspect and palpate kidney area for tenderness, bruising, swelling, or other trauma signs. Hollow organs will spill continence into peritoneal cavity. Vital signs. Many abdominal emergencies can cause a rapid pulse and low blood pressure. Rec record of vital signs. Uh, record of vital signs will help identify changes in conditions. Use appropriate monitoring devices. So make sure you, if you guys have a SPO2, mm -hmm. go ahead and. Uh, Use your SBO2 if you can. Uh, make sure patients get good oxygen in between 94 and 99 percent. Go ahead and throw oxygen on that patient if you can. If MOI suggests an isolated injury to the abdomen, focus your physical examination on the injured area only. So, reassessment. Always remember um, reassessing every patient, no matter what. No matter how minor or severe the, the injury may be. Repeat the primary assessment and reassess vital signs. Reassess interventions and treatment. Interventions. Manage airway and breathing problems. Provide spinal mobilization. Treatment for shock. Cover wounds. Communication. Documentation. Communicate all relevant information to staff at receiving hospitals. Document re results of physical exam and pertinent negatives. Describe scene in enough detail to give trauma team a clear understanding. Be cautious and diligent when dealing with patients who refuse transport. Make sure you cover all your bases. Make sure your patient is able to answer all your questions. Alert oriented times four. Can't leave any ALOC patients um, on their own or even with somebody else. Have them sign an AMA. Make sure it's not a, uh, a significant injury. Try and convince patients to go to the hospital. 
Emergency medical care of abdominal injuries. Closed abdominal injuries. Biggest concern is not knowing the extent of injury. Patient requires rapid transport, primarily to the trauma center or surgeon. Position for comfort. Apply high flow oxygen if signs of hypoxia or shock. Treat for shock. So if you have possible internal bleeding or it looks like some contusion, uh, hemato hematoma, um, ecchymosis in the area of the abdomen, remember there's multiple organs there. Uh, you're not a doctor. Uh, you don't have to figure out what's going on. So transport that patient to the nearest trauma center. Have them seen by a surgeon. Patient with blunt abdominal wounds may have severe bruising of abdominal wall, liver and spleen laceration, rupture of intestine, tears and mesentery, rupture or avulsion of kidneys, intra-abdominal hemorrhage, peritoneal irritation and inflammation. Patient with blunt abdominal injuries should be log rolled to a supine position on a backboard. Protect the spine. Monitor vital signs. Open abdominal injuries. Patients with penetrating injuries, generally obvious wounds, external bleeding maintain a high index of suspicion for serious unseen blood loss. Surgeons should assess damage. Inspect patients back and sides for exit wound. Um, always want to no, um, say if it's a knife or stabbing um, or a GSW, you want to see if there's any uh, possible exit wounds. Um, sometimes there's not going to be exit wounds. Apply dry sterile dressings to all open wounds. If penetrating object is still in place. Apply stabilizing bandage around it. Do not pull that object out. And evisceration, severe laceration of the abdominal wall may result in internal organs or fat protruding through wound. So we have an evisceration right here in this picture. Um, the bowels outside the stomach. So we want to put a moist sterile dressing over the the abdominal cap, excuse me, abdominal contents. Do not push this stuff back in. Just leave it in place and try and keep the patient in position of comfort. Never try to replace a protruding organ. Keep the organs moist and warm. Cover with moistened sterile dressings. Secure dressing with bandage. Secure bandage with tape. Okay, so another open. Ah, uh, looks like we have some abdominal contents sticking out. Okay, so we're gonna cover moist sterile dressings. Make sure patient stays warm. So anatomy of the genitourinary system controls reproductive functions and waste discharge. Organs of the genitourinary system are located in the abdomen. Kidneys, ureters, bladder, urethra. Male genitalia lie outside pelvic cavity. Female genitalia lie within pelvic cavity. Okay, so you have a front view of the males uh, urinary system and a side view. And then you have uh, females, front view and side view as well. Injuries of the genitourinary system. Kidney injuries, not unusual and rarely occur in isolation. Kidneys lie in well-protected area. Forcible blow or penetrating injury often involved. Suspect kidney damage if patient has evidence of any of the following. Abrasion, laceration, contusion on the flank. Penetrating wound in region of flank or upper abdomen. Fractures on either side of lower rib cage or of lower thoracic and or upper lumbar vertebrae. A hematoma in the flank region. Urinary bladder injuries may result in rupture. Urine spills into surrounding tissues. Blunt injuries to lower abdomen or pelvis can rupture urinary bladder. In males, sudden deceleration can shear the bladder from the urethra. In later trimesters of pregnancy, bladder injuries increase. So... We haven't got to the pregnancy part chapter, uh, so anything over 20 weeks for a pregnant patient, any kind of traumatic injury is going to be transferred to a trauma center. Um, just because it's a possibility of injury to the baby. 
And usually you're going to just be transferred right up to L&D or labor and delivery. Okay, so this is going to be a fractured pelvis and also um, looks like the bone fragment broke off, punctured the bladder and now it's spilling urine so that could cause an infection. So external male genitalia injuries, soft tissue wounds, painful and of great concern for patient, rarely life-threatening, should not be given priority over more severe wounds unless there is severe bleeding. Female genitalia injuries, internal female genitalia, ureters, uter, uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes are rarely damaged. Exception is pregnant uterus. Uterus enlarges substantially and rises out of pelvis. Injuries can be severe, can be serious. Also keep fetus in mind. External female genitalia, vulva, clitoris, major and minor labia, very rich nerve supply. Consider sexual assault in pregnancy. If external bleeding, a sterile abs absorbent sanitary pad may be applied to the labia. Do not insert anything into the vagina. Patient assessment of the genital urinary system. Potential for patient embarrassment. Maintain a professional presence. Provide privacy. Have EMT of same gender perform assessment. Look for blood on patient's undergarments. So remember, try and pull that patient aside. Pull them into the, the other room or pull them to the back of the ambulance. Throw a blanket over them. Have a, a female partner check somebody out uh, if it's another female. Maintain that privacy. Um, ask your EMT to, or ask your partner what they see. If there's any discharge, what does it look like? Is there any bleeding? Is there any lacerations, any tears? Um, anything you should be aware of anything that you might have to relate to the hospital. Scene size up, scene safety, assess the scene for hazards and threats, assess the impact of hazards on care, look for indicators of MOI, patient may avoid discussion to avoid undergoing physical exam, patient may provide an MOI that seems less embarrassing than the actual MOI. So you guys could always sense too when patients not being forthcoming for an injury. Um, Always try and continue to ask questions, figure out what's going on, what actually happened. So primary assessment, quickly scan patient to identify and treat life threats. Genital urinary system is very vascular. Do not avoid this area in the rapid scan. Life-threatening hemorrhage must be addressed immediately. If bleeding is present, inspect exterior genitalia for visible injury. Form a general impression. Airway and breathing, ensure the patient has a clear and patent airway, protect from further spinal injury. Consider advanced airway if patient is unresponsive. Circulation, genital urinary system can be a significant source of bleeding, assess pulse rate and quality. Closed injuries do not have visible signs of bleeding. Control bleeding if seen. Transport decision, any injury to the genital urinary system can be life altering often requires medical specialist for specialized care. History taking, investigate chief complaint, investigate what the patient's telling you. Um, know your index of suspicion. Common associated complaints with genital urinary injuries are nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, blood and urine, vomiting, blood, abnormal bowel and bladder habits. Sample history, use OPQRST to learn about patient's pain. Ask patient about output especially blood and urine. Ask about allergies. The importance of past medical history cannot be overstated. Last intake of food and fluid. Address events leading up to injury. Secondary assessment. Physical examinations. Genital urinary system injuries can be awkward to assess and treat. Privacy is a genuine concern. Remember, every patient gets a Respect and privacy of every call. Focus on specific region of body when isolated injury is present. Look for DCAP BTLS. Identify wounds and control bleeding. Start with a full body scan for significant trauma. Presence of penetrating trauma or penetrating injury indicates possible internal injury. Presence of burns must be noted and managed immediately. Palpate for tenderness to localize the injury and presence of fractures. Look for lacerations and local swelling. So vital signs, obtain the patient's vital signs, 
Important to reassess vital signs to identify differences in condition, tachycardia, tachypnea. Low blood pressure, weak pulse, and cool, moist, pale skin indicate hypoperfusion. Use pulse oximetry and non-invasive blood pressure devices when available. Reassessment. Interventions. Provide oxygen if there are signs of dyspnea or shock and maintain airway. Control bleeding and treat for shock. Place patient in pa position of comfort and transport. Communication documentation. Communicate all concerns to hospital staff. Describe and document all injuries and treatments given. Emergency medical care of genital urinary injuries, kidney injuries. Injuries may not be obvious. You will see signs of shock and blood in urine. Treat for shock. Transport promptly and monitor vital signs en route. Urinary bladder injury. Suspect if you see blood at your urethral opening, signs of trauma to lower abdomen, pelvis, or perineum. In presence of shock or associated injuries, transport promptly. Monitor vital signs en route. External male genitalia. Make patient uncomfortable. Excuse me. Make, make patient comfortable. Uh, use sterile, moist compresses to cover areas stripped of skin. Apply direct pressure with dry, sterile gauze. Dressings to control bleeding. Never move or manipulate foreign objects in urethra. Identify and take avulsed parts and bag to, to hospital with patient. Amputation of penile shaft. Managing blood loss is top priority. Use local pressure with sterile dressing. Surgical reconstruction is possible if you can locate the amputated part. If connective tissue surrounding erectile tissue is damaged, shaft can be fractured or angled. Sometimes requires surgical repair. Injury may occur during active sexual intercourse. Associated with intense pain, bleeding, and fear. Laceration of head of penis. Associated with heavy bleeding, apply local pressure with still dressing. Skin of shaft or foreskin, cotton zipper. If small segment of zipper is involved, try to unzip. If long segment of zipper is involved, cut the zipper out of the pants with heavy scissors. Urethral injuries are not uncommon. Straddle injuries, pelvic fractures, and penetrating wounds of the perineum. Important to know if patient can urinate and if there is blood in urine. Save urine for hospital examination. Foreign bodies protruding from urethra will, be, will have to be surgically removed. Avulsion of the skin of the scrotum may damage scrotal contents. Prevert, preserve avulsed skin in a moist, sterile dressing. Wrap scrotal, scrotal contents or perineal area with a sterile moist dress, moist compress. Direct blows to scrotum can result in rupture of a testicle or accumulation of blood around testes. Apply ice to scrotal area. Female genitalia. Treat lacerations and avulsions with moist sterile compresses. Use local pressure to control bleeding. Hold dressings in place with diaper type bandage. Do not pack dressings into vagina. Leave any foreign bodies in place after stabilizing with bandages. Injuries are painful but not life-threatening. In-hospital evaluation required. Transport urgency determined by associated injuries. Amount of hemorrhage and presence of shock. Rectal bleeding is a common complaint. May present as blood or in or soaking through undergarments. Possible causes include sexual assault, rectal foreign bodies, hemorrhoids, colitis, and ulcers. Rectal bleeding possible after hemorrhoid surgery. Sexual assault. Sexual assault and rape are common. Victims are generally women, sometimes men and children. Often there is little you could do beyond providing compassion and transport. Patients may have sustained multi-system trauma and need treatment for shock. Do not examine genitalia unless obvious uh, bleeding requires application of dressing. Follow appropriate procedures and protocol. Shield patient from curious onlookers. Document patient's history, assessment, treatment, and response to treatment. Follow crime scene policy of your EMS system. So whatever your EMS county protocols are, you want to follow that. Advise patient not to wash, bathe, shower, uh, urinate, or defecate until after examination. Uh, there might be some DNA um, on the body uh, and around the genitalia. So you want to preserve that. Um, if oral penetration occurred, advise patient not to eat, drink, or brush the teeth or use mouthwash until after examination. Handle patient's clothes, clothes as little as possible.
Make sure EMT caring for patient is the same gender as patient whenever possible. Treat medical injuries and provide privacy, support, and reassurance. Sometimes the best thing to do for these patients is just to, um, don't touch them. Just put them on the gurney and take them to the hospital. If the patient's walking, talking, um, and they're not, uh, they don't seem dizzy or lightheaded, um, probably going to have a good blood pressure. The last thing you want to do is probably touch somebody who's been sexually assaulted. Just put them on the gurney and take them to the hospital. It's probably the best thing you could do for these patients. Okay. So peritonitis would most likely result following injury to the what? So D, in general, solid organs bleed when injured and hollow organs spill their contents in the abdominal cavity, resulting peritonitis, inflammation of the intra-abdominal lining. Of the choice listed, the stomach is the only hollow organ. Which of the following organs would be the most likely to bleed profusely if severely injured? So A, the liver is a highly vascular solid organ and contains approximately 40% of the body's total blood volume at any given time. If severely injured, bleeding from the liver would be profuse and rapid. Other solid organs such as the spleen and kidneys may also produce severe bleeding if injured, though not as rapid as the liver. The stomach and gallbladder are hollow organs. With the last array, they would spill their contents into the abdominal cavity, resulting in peritonitis. Which of the following statements regarding intra-abdominal bleeding is false? So C, intra-abdominal bleeding is common following blunt trauma to the abdomen. Signs include abdominal distension, rigidity, bruising may not occur immediately, and in some cases pain to palpation. However, unlike gastric juices and bacteria, blood within the abdominal cavity does not provoke an inflammatory response. Therefore, the absence of pain and tenderness does not rule out internal bleeding. So even when seatbelts are worn properly and the airbags deploy, injury may occur to the what? We looked at a, a picture earlier, uh, a lady with an abrasion across her, well, you get abrasions across the, the chest, but also seat belts uh, should be positioned over the iliac crest of the pelvis. Uh, so you can get some injuries there as well. If they are positioned higher, significant intra-abdominal injury can occur. Even when seat belts are properly positioned, airbags deploy injury to the iliac crest may occur as a locking mechanism the seatbelt engages during a motor vehicle crash that involves rapid deceleration. While inspecting the interior of a wrecked automobile, you should be most suspicious that the driver experienced abdominal injury if you find a So what are a couple of things you you want to know um, on car accidents? What was a patient wearing a seatbelt? Is there starring spidering of the windshield? Is A, the steering wheel deformed? Airbags save lives when used in conjunction with properly worn seatbelts. Unfortunately, however, not all drivers wear their seatbelts. If unrestrained, the driver's abdomen may strike the steering wheel, resulting in significant trauma. Suspect this if you lift the airbag and note that the lower part of the steering wheel is deformed. So other than applying a moist sterile dressing and covered with a dry dressing to treat an abdominal evisceration, an alternative form of management may include. D, 
D. Although the preferred management for an abdominal evisceration includes the application of a moist sterile dressing covered by a dry dressing, protocols in some EMS systems call for an occlusive dressing. Secured by trauma dressings, an occlusive dressing may help prevent the loss of body heat through the abdominal wound. You are transporting a patient with possible peritonitis following trauma to the abdomen. Which position will he most likely prefer to assume? So B, patients with peritonitis often lie very still and tend to have their legs drawn up into the abdomen. This relieves strain on the abdominal muscles and may provide pain relief. So remember, we talked about this earlier in the presentation. What kind of position um, is this going to be called? It's going to be called a guarded position because they're going to be guarding their abdomen. A 16-year-old boy who was playing football and was struck in the left flank during a, a tackle. His vital signs are stable. However, he is in severe pain. He should be most concerned that he has injury injured his... So remember where all your uh, all your organs are. Um, which part of the body are they going to be? The left side, the right side, and which quadrant are they going to be in? So C, the flanks are located laterally in the back and overlie the kidneys. During football, spearing injuries occur when a player is struck in the flank by another player's helmet. This can result in injury to the kidney, ranging from bruising to severe bleeding, injury to the liver, spleen, and bladder would most likely occur following blunt trauma to the anterior abdomen. The term hematuria is defined as, remember if you guys don't um, know the term, uh, you guys could also break it down into parts. Hema is going to be blood. And urea is going to be urine. So blood in the B, blood in the urine is called hematuria. Following trauma, the presence of hematuria suggests injury to the urinary bladder or kidneys. Bright red blood in the stool is called hematochesia. Dark starry stools are called melena. Vomiting up blood is called hematemesis. So these are good um, medical terms for you guys to know. When caring for female with trauma to the external genitalia, the EMT should remember the two things that you're not going to do. You're not going to pack the vagina and you're not going to remove any impaled objects. So A, bleeding from the external genitalia should be controlled by applying a dry, sterile dressing and local direct pressure. Never pack anything into the vagina to try and control bleeding. This increases the risk of infection and anything you place into the vagina will only need to be removed at the hospital. Impaled objects in the genitalia should be carefully stabilized in place, not removed. <clears throat> 